What's up slackers? Welcome to Book Cheats. Today we're going to be talking about To Kill a Mockingbird chapter 14. So at the beginning of this chapter, Scout says that Aunt Alexandria stopped talking about their heritage so much, but it seemed like everybody else in town couldn't stop talking about the Finch family. Every time Scout and Jem went out, people said that they were nig- <laughs> People said that they were black men lovers. And one day, while Jem and Scout were out, somebody called them rape enablers. When Scout got home that night, she remembered that she asked Calpurnia what rape was, and that Calpurnia had told her to ask her father what rape meant. That night, when Scout asked Atticus what rape was, Atticus gave her a legal answer and said that it was carnal knowledge of a female by force. Well, Scout, rape is a violent crime. When a man forces a woman to bend over, and he sticks her right up. Scout didn't really understand this answer, and she said, oh, if that's all it meant, why did Calpurnia dry up when I asked her about it? Atticus asked Scout when she had asked Calpurnia what rape meant, and Scout recounted the day that she and Jem went to church with Calpurnia. Yeah. I got peoples in the church smoking weed, drinking whiskey, drinking vodka, a lot of gin. What you as Scout was telling the story of the time that Jem and her went to the black church, Atticus seemed to be enjoying the story and thought it was kind of amusing. On the rocking chair, Aunt Alexandria was sitting, knitting. She was listening in on the story in horror. Scout continued and said that Calpurnia had invited her to come over to her house at any time and that Scout wanted to go over to visit Calpurnia that Sunday. Aunt Alexandria was shocked and stood up and said, you may not. Scout rudely turned and said, I didn't ask you. Atticus stood up quickly and told Scout that she needed to apologize to her Aunt Alexandria. Hell no, to the no, no, no. And Scout insisted that she was asking Atticus and that she didn't want Al Aunt Alexandria to butt in. Atticus explained that while Aunt Alexandria was living in their household, that she was to obey Aunt Alexandria's rule while she was there. Scout was upset and hid in the bathroom, and when Scout finally came out of the bathroom, Atticus and Alexandria were arguing in the front room. Atticus was defending Scout that it was totally fine for her to go over to Calpurnia's house and that Calpurnia had pretty much raised them from when they were young. Aunt Alexandria was insisting that this was wrong because Calpurnia was black. Aunt Alexandria shifted the conversation and told Atticus that he should fire Calpurnia. Atticus said that he would never fire Calpurnia because she had been a member of this family and she was welcome to work there as long as she wanted. Scout walked into the front room and Atticus and Aunt Alexandria immediately stopped arguing. Alexandria went back to knitting and she was visibly upset. Jem motioned for Scout to come to his room. They were both shocked because that was the first time they had ever seen Atticus fight. Jem told Scout to stop bugging Aunt Alexandria and getting on her nerves so much because Atticus had a lot on his mind. Scout felt like everybody was trying to tell her what to do and she told Jem that he couldn't tell her what to do. Uh -uh, you can't tell me nothing. Jem said to Scout that if she wasn't nice to Aunt Alexandria, he would spank her. This was the last straw, and Scout stood up, grabbed Jem's hair, and punched him in the face. <laughs> Jem came back and smacked Scout across the cheek, and then punched her in the stomach to knock the wind out of her. <laughs> which brought her to the ground. Scout knew she had won because that proved that they were equals. Because if Jem would have been above Scout, he wouldn't have fought back. Atticus rushed into the room and separated them. And Atticus asked who started the fight. Scout immediately said that Jem was trying to tell her what to do. And she sarcastically said that, Do I have to obey Jem too now? Atticus smiled and said that as long as Jem couldn't make her do anything, she didn't have to. Atticus told them both to go to bed, and as they were separating into their respective rooms, Scout heard Aunt Alexandria say, I told you so. Scout shut out the light and walked towards her bed, and as she was walking towards her bed, she stepped on something weird, and the thing that she stepped on moved out of the way. Scout slowly walked to Jem's room and knocked on the door quietly, because she thought she had stepped on a snake. Enough is enough! 
I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. She asks Jem what a snake felt like, and she tells Jem that she thinks that there's one underneath her bed. Jem says that there's no way that he's reaching underneath her bed if there's a snake down there, and Jem quietly sneaks into the kitchen and grabs the broom. Jem tells Scout to get on top of the bed so that if there was a snake, it couldn't bite her. And without looking, Jem jabs underneath the bed. After the first jab, Jem and Scout heard a familiar grunt. Slowly, a head wiggled from underneath the bed, and Scout and Jem at the same time recognized who it was. It was Dill. Jem and Scout were both shocked to see Dill there, and the first thing that Dill said was, You guys got anything to eat? I'm about to perish. Scout snuck into the kitchen and got Dill some milk and cornbread and came back. And after bringing him the cornbread, Scout finally found her voice and asked Dill how he got there. Dill made up this elaborate story about how he walked across the country, chained up, and made this elaborate story about how he traveled cross country like a hero. Jem knew that he was a big exaggerator and asked him what really happened. Dill said that he had stole $30 from his mother's wallet and hopped on the train and rode to Macomb County. And he had to walk several miles and jump on top of a truck to get to the house. Once he got to the house, he hid underneath Scout's bed and waited there for half the day. Dill says that he saw the fight between Jem and Scout and that he was tempted to jump in, but he knew that Scout could handle herself. Jem tells Dill that he's super irresponsible and that his mother must be worried about him for running away. Jem breaks the child code and goes and gets Atticus. Atticus comes into the doorway and stops and evaluates the situation. He told Scout to get Dill some real food and Dill pleads with Atticus to not tell his Aunt Rachel because he doesn't want to go back home. Dill says that if they send him back, he'll just run right back to make him. Atticus told Dill that he needed to tell Miss Rachel so that she could let his mom know that everything was okay, and that he was gonna ask Miss Rachel if it was okay that he spent the night at his house. Atticus nicely tells Dill to take a bath because he was super dirty from all the travels. Jem was standing in the corner like the traitor he was, and all Jem said was that Dill couldn't run off without letting his parents know, and Jem went off to bed. Dill hadn't eaten in 24 hours, and when Scout got him some food, Dill stuffed his face like an Asian man in a hot dog eating contest. We got the count for you. As Dill was stuffing his face, Scout and Dill heard Miss Rachel shouting in relief. And when Atticus asked her if Dill could stay, Miss Rachel said that it wouldn't hurt for him to stay one night, and she allowed Dill to stay at Scout's house for the night. Scout and Dill decided to forgive Jem for his treachery, mostly because everything ended up being okay, and they didn't get into too much trouble, and because Dill had to sleep in the same room as Jem. Late that night, Scout was woken up by a shaking hand from Dill. Dill told Scout that he wanted to sleep next to her, And Scout scooted over, and when Dill laid next to her, she asked Dill why he ran away. Dill says that his mom and his new stepdad were always fawning over each other and never paid attention to him. Scout thought this was the weirdest reason to run away, because she always enjoyed being on her own when Atticus was at work. And when Dill sees that she kind of thinks this is pathetic, he switches his mood and jokes that the reason why he ran away was because he didn't think that anybody in Maycomb could survive without him. Scout sort of calls BS, and Dill goes back to saying that everything seemed to be great because his mom and new dad would buy him tons of stuff, but they seemed too much into each other to ever pay attention to Dill. Dill tells Scout that he wants to have a baby with her, and that he heard that babies come from a misty island where you ride a boat and have to pay a ferryman to get a baby. Scout says that that was a lie, and that her auntie said that babies came down a chimney chute. Well, you're not wrong. <laughs> Dill went off on a big story about how babies came to be, and as Dill was telling this elaborate story, Scout interrupted him and said, Hey, why do you think Boo Radley's never run off before? And Dill ends the chapter by saying, Maybe he doesn't have anywhere to run off to. And that concludes the chapter. Thanks so much for watching Book Cheats. Please leave that like and subscribe. If you have any questions from your homework, leave a comment down below, and I'll get to it as soon as I can. You guys have an awesome day, and slack on. To the no, 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 here to the no, here to the no, to the no, 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 listen. I got kids dropping out of school, talking about.